In this episode of Locked On Capitals, we talk Alex Ovechkin and Connor McMichael. We'll talk about all of that and more next on this edition of Locked On Capitals. Keep it right here. Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen or view of the day. Yes, this podcast is also available in video form. So head on over to YouTube and check that out. My name is Dan Holmey. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at LockedOnCaps. So in this episode, this is the offseason, so we're going to break down some of the comings and goings and the news surrounding the Washington Capitals. In this particular episode, we are going to talk about uh, Connor McMichael and uh, just where does he fit into the Washington Capitals' future. Uh, Many people are saying that Lars Eller uh, could have played his last game with the Washington Capitals. Could he uh, be a younger, more viable option at the center position? We'll talk about that. Then later in the show, we're going to talk about Alex Ovechkin's homecoming. And then in the final segment, we are going to talk about the media availability and what all the Capitals players and coaches thought. So to start off here, we're going to talk about um, Connor McMichael. And, uh, you know, he's a player for the Washington Capitals that, uh, you know, is kind of coming into his own. And, uh, you know, I think that there's a bright future for him on this team He was drafted in 2019, first round, 25th pick overall. So, I mean, that already speaks volumes of him and, uh, you know, what the Washington Capitals and the NHL at large thought of him. Um, And that's what I'm talking about is I do think that there is a chance that at some point uh, someone like McMichael could replace someone like Lars Eller as this team wants to go younger. uh, McMichael would definitely fill the bill for that. Uh, Just taking a look at some of his stats, uh, the 21-22 season. Um, He played rather well in uh, 68 games. He had nine goals, nine assists, uh, 18, and a minus three rating. Uh, His overall career rating in 69 games was nine goals, nine assists, and 18 uh, points with a minus three rating. So he was a guy that was kind of a healthy scratch for a long time. So I don't think that it's really easy to judge uh, who Connor McMichael is at this point. I think that they're kind of just slowly integrating him into this team. McMichael, 21, is the youngest full-time player on a much more mature Caps roster in limited minutes. He's recorded nine goals and nine points, and yet the young winger sometimes plays center. He can play center, has seemingly fallen out of favor with coach Peter Laviolette, and yet last month's Laviolette was circumspect on Mike Michael's season. There are some good things, Laviolette said, some ups, some downs, some nights where you're star of the game. There's some nights where you're such you're a scratch. And uh, I guess that's what he's talking about with Mike Michael there is, you know, he's got to be patient. I know that uh, a lot of these younger players, they want to just reach for the limelight right away and uh, reach for the stars. But that's not always the case. Not everyone uh, is Alex Ovechkin and not everyone can just get thrust into a starting role. Some of these guys, they got to kind of work their way up through the system. And uh, he has kept his head on straight the entire time, worked hard through the course of the year, done the right things, quietly gone about his business in a positive way. That's solid, but considered a praise for the player, which makes all the more mystifying the consistent decision not to play him. It's clear that Washington is a better team with Connor McMichael on the ice. Uh, He's a young player and he's exactly what the Washington Capitals are looking for. Uh, You know, everyone talks about how it's such an old team and they got to get younger and faster. Well, I think that he fits the build perfectly. Don't you guys think that? Um, Like I say, there has been a lot of younger players, you know, Hendricks, LaPierre, Leeson, Protus. They've all kind of had their ups and downs with the Washington Capitals. In the statistics, not affected by goaltending and shooting, the Capitals are a dominant team when McMichael is playing for them. A 57.4 percentage is in expected goals is roughly where the Calgary Flames are in this season. And those same statistics, when McMichael is on the bench for the Capitals, drop below 50%, which means their opponent have the puck more and are doing more with it. This is a story in Russian Machine Never Break. And then we get to the actual goals we're shooting. Luck and goaltending come into play. Everything switches. Now the Capitals are below even when McMichael is on the ice and dominant when he's on the bench. Uh, 
Here's how he's shooting in the save percentage, and they kind of break down some more of the statistics on him. But I do think that, uh, you know, like I say, he does have a bright future. Um, just kind of looking back over his career, he got a start with the Hamilton Bulldogs in the 17-18 season. McMichael was drafted by the Hamilton Bulldogs in the first round, 11th overall, during the 2017 OHL Priority Draft. McMichael made his debut with the Bulldogs on September 23rd, 2017, and he was held to no points in a 4-1 loss to the Niagara Ice Dogs. Two games later, on September 29th, McMichael earned his first career OHL goal, an assist on a goal by Isaac Nurse in a 2 to nothing win over the Missaga Steelheads. McMichael would have to wait until his 24th career game to score his first goal as he scored against the Cameron Lamore um, of the Saginaw Spirit in a 7-1 to victory. And then in the 18-20 season, um, between those years, he played for the London Knights. Uh, and as you know, uh, that team always has a good lineup out there uh, with Dale Hunter oftentimes as the head coach there. McMichael finished his rookie season in the OHL with the London Knights. He made his debut with the Knights on January 11th, 2018, and he was held to no points in a 5-1 to loss to the Kitchener Rangers. McMichael scored his first goal with London on January 14th against Luke Richardson in a 2-1 to win over the Rangers. In 28 games with the Knights, McMichael scored three goals and six points. On March 22nd, McMichael played in his first career OHL game, and he had no points in a 5-4 to loss to the Owen Sound attack in four playoff games. McMichael had no points. And uh, he's, you know, a guy that's kind of finding his way. Like I say, I think that, you know, that is not his native position, necessarily a center. I know that, you know, oftentimes he played wing, but there were uh, at least one game I can think of uh, that he played center and uh, he didn't seem too opposed to it. And, you know, a part of being a young player is kind of being a Swiss army knife, getting in where you fit in and uh, and, and just doing that. Because if you want to have any longevity in the NHL, that's what you have to do. You have to play where they need you. You're not always going to get the star studded roles. You're not going to always play on the top line with Alex Ovechkin, even though that did happen through at least a couple games this last season. So just taking a look at McMichael, I do think that he would be a suitable fit on that top line. And perhaps, you know, at some point he could uh, replace Lars Eller as a center. Um, just, you know, that's what I'm saying. They want to go younger and younger and younger. And uh, that's why I think that a lot of these older players on the teams are going to try to prioritize and keep as many of them as they can. But there are some of them that they may need to part with. And kind of just a cold, hard reality of playing in the NHL is you just have to you have to wait for your spots. You're not always going to get uh, first billing. You're not always going to get to be on the top line with the top rated players. You've got to sometimes slowly integrate into the team. It kind of begs the question, however, though, would he have been better served playing in Hershey this past season where he could have had more playing time? We'll talk a little bit more about McMichael after the break here. You know, I think that he's a bright future ahead of him with the Capitals. All right, I love brownies, but you know what I love more? Brownie batter. Sometimes I eat half the batter just while I'm making the brownies. Imagine if you could look at that brownie spatula clean and get some protein in. You're in luck because Built has a new creation, and this one is better than ever. The brownie batter puff. You heard me right. This puff protein bar to a whole new level, and they're available right now on Built.com. Have you tried the Built Puffs yet? I'm not sure what you're waiting for. Puffs are a chocolate-covered marshmallow protein bar. That's right, delicious flavored marshmallow covered in 100% real chocolate with 140 calories, 17 grams of protein, and only 7 grams of sugar. Brownie batter puffs are the perfect pick for any day. All Built Puffs are covered in 100% real chocolate. That means that with Built Bars, you can eat healthy and actually enjoy doing it. The Brownie Batter Puffs will have you completely forgetting that you're eating a protein bar. No need to pinch yourself. This is real life. So go to Built.com to get Brownie Batter Puffs now. Go to Built.com. Use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. That's go to Built.com and use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Thank you for making Locked On Capitals your first listen. For your next listen, check out Locked On Now podcasts, nightly recaps of every NHL game with analysis from our local experts, free and available wherever you get your podcasts. So that is, we're going to continue to talk about Connor McMichael and his contributions to this team and uh, why are they kind of uh, hesitant about working him in and, and having a bigger role uh, with the team it kind of just defies logic to me. If you take a look at his playing record and and uh, the statistics on 
quite sound. And uh, Ovechkin often refers to McMichael as McJesus, which I, you know, I can't, you know, end to find the humor in that. I think that it's so funny that uh, he's a bomb with Alex Ovechkin. Nick Jesus Ovechkin said a laugh. Ovechkin said the whole team stumbled upon the nickname for the freshman in a 2019 first round draft pick. The moniker most notably belongs to Edmonton Oilers star Connor McDavid. And, uh, you know, it, it's just a funny thing that they can have a lighthearted moment. I think we see how the young guys step up this year through all of the injuries of Etchkin said, I think it's good for us. They're going and they will help us next year for sure. And that's what I was talking about as well, is I think that you will see a lot of different players work into this team. It's, uh, you know, going to be a lot of the faces that you've known and loved that might be done with the Capitals because... I mean, let's just have a moment of clarity here, Washington Capitals fans. They made another first round exit. Do you think they will get past the first round next year if they go with the same lineup? And I think that the answer to that is a resounding no. Uh, So I think that that's what it's time for, to work some of these younger players in. You know, you take a look at the New York Rangers and how well that worked for them. They were a team that, you know, they uh, faced a rebuild and it was a rough, you know, year, year and a half. But look at them now. Uh, They're in the playoffs and uh, they're playing very well. So it doesn't necessarily mean to be a long and laborious process. And I think that it's into those plans. McMichael spent time at both center and wing this season, but primarily played on the left side, given injuries and team's depth down the middle. However, going forward, the expectation is for him to maintain the role of a pivot going forward. This is in Washington hockey. Now they're talking about McMichael. I thought this year was really good for a young player. Head coach Peter Laviolette said he was in and out of the lineup. He liked him best when he was playing center. He seemed like he found more speed through the middle of the ice and he was able to attack the game more through the middle. And that's what I'm talking about, speed. That's what it's about. I think the Washington Capitals got outworked in that Florida Panther series. And I think that this is a great opportunity to seize the moment and and pick up another young uh, uh, young player, have him in the lineup. So not just McMichael, but maybe you'll see more like with Hendricks LaPierre, or maybe they'll trade uh, some of these veteran players for some draft picks or some young uh, prospects. I think that it's going to be an interesting season uh, for the Capitals as they, they're kind of in a transitional phase. You know, like I talked about in yesterday's podcast, is that if you take a look at the Washington Nationals and, and what they're going through, uh, and now I hear rumors that they might even be trading Juan Soto. Are you guys crazy? You know, that's you know almost the equivalency for me of like, uh, we're going to trade Alex Ovechkin. So I'm not sure what's going on with uh, the leadership over with the Nationals. I think that uh, they need to just, uh, with Rizzo and the learners over there, they really need to figure it out um, just because, you know, you take a look at that team that won the World Series in 2019 and my, how they have fallen. The last time I checked, they were in last place and they're kind of down in the cellar looking up like, get us out of here, you know? And then what are you going to do? The guy that could drop the ladder down to you, uh, Juan Soto, they're like, yeah, he might be gone too. So that would have to be quite a haul in my opinion, um, if you're going to trade someone like Juan Soto, but that is just all in reference to, you know, this pending um, rebuild for the Washington Capitals. Like I say, it is looming, and uh, I think that it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. Uh, Caps Nation, you know, you just got to be patient and trust the system. You know, and Peter Laviolette, what is his future with the Washington Capitals? We'll talk about that in the final segment, but. I don't think that it all has to be doom and gloom. I think there is a possibility that this Capitals team can make it through uh, this this rebuild kind of uh, unscathed for the most part. I hope so anyway. So uh, that's what I'm talking about. I think that, you know, with McMichael, put him in at center. Uh, he seems to be a younger, better version of Lars Eller. I'm looking forward to watching him grow this summer, get stronger, which I think there's room for. As all young players, there's room to get stronger and come back into training camp and really physically attack the ice and the game and work and be a regular in the lineup, Lavulette said. Uh, General Manager Brian McClellan also said that he believes McMichael's role will expand next season and that he is more affecting, a more effective playing pivot. And uh, if you kind of just uh, look back on uh, Trevor Van Riemsdyk, And uh, you take a look at uh, how he played with the Washington Capitals this past year. Um, You know, he, he had a a bigger role this year, but if you remember the year before that, he, he, the Capitals picked him up, but he didn't get a ton of playing time. So a lot of times that's what I'm saying with these players is they have to be patient. I know it's not an apples for apples comparison because I know that uh, Van Riemsdyk was a bit older, but just a good example of some maturity and uh, kind of seeing down the football field saying, you know what, I'm not getting a lot of playing time, but this team 
be up to me. Uh, they have some faith in me. As long as I stick to my game, I think, you know, that I'm going to be okay. And I think that everything will be uh, all right for him as they play. Looking at Washington's roster as a whole, Carlson enjoyed seeing several rookies like McMichael make the NHL jump, and he believes that the organization organization's youth can bring a lot to the table. They are great players that deserve to play a lot of minutes and have a lot of responsibility, Carlson said, adding, I would expect big things out of him. And uh, that's just the faith that is being thrust upon Connor McMichael. I think I just get a lot of games under my belt. I feel more comfortable, a lot more confident out there, McMichael said. I feel like there's not as many nerves as there would be if I were to just jump in towards the end of the regular season right into the playoffs. So I think I've got a really comfortable with my game and I'm still getting better and better. And uh, I think that he is too. And I hope that he does get his role because, you know, he's kind of worked his way up and I think that he deserves uh, his shot on the big team. And it looks like that he will most likely um, get that next year. All right, so after the break, we're going to talk about, you know, what are they, what are the plans for Peter Laviolette and what has Alex Ovechkin been up to? Um, you know, he's back home already, kind of enjoying some time with his children. We'll talk about that. But first, our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all of the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even next year's NFL futures. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online where the game starts. All right. So in this final segment, we're going to talk a little Alex Ovechkin and, uh, you know, what are his plans with the Washington Capitals? As it turns out, he's back at home. Uh, he's spending more time with his family, which is always a good thing. And uh, just to kind of relive and look at his uh, career, um, you know, if you take a look at the contributions, Alex Ovechkin uh, suffered that shoulder injury, which in a lot of cases could have sidelined him. But that wasn't the case with Alex Ovechkin. He found a way to overcome and persevere. And uh, that is the big thing for Alex is that, you know, he's just got to find a way to overcome and get better as he as he goes along. And the good thing about Alex Ovechkin is it sounds like he doesn't, in fact, need surgery. So here's to hoping that Alex Ovechkin, you know, he's, he's going to continue in his winning ways. You know, I talked about in yesterday's podcast and, and today's podcast a little bit about... Um, uh, Nick Baxterman, and where does he fit into this team? And uh, I think that, you know, with with Alex Ovechkin and Nick Baxter, I feel pretty confident that, you know, that they can make a deep run. And, you know, if they start to integrate some of these younger players, I do think that there is a chance that, uh, you know, they can make another a run for the cup because Alex Ovechkin is not getting any younger uh, just like none of us are. So it's just, it's good to see that him producing, but it's also uh, good to see him back at home, enjoying his wife and children. Um, you know, you got to think that he misses, misses them throughout the season. I know that uh, he was at a couple games, but with all the fiasco going on with Russia, I know it's been made it a little bit more difficult, you know, looking back at the season, Ovechkin still said it was difficult to be away from his family for months. It was tough. He said, I saw my wife only once, one, one week, and I didn't see my kids since they left. So, I mean, that's tough. That's watching your kids getting older. Um, the, your kids are getting older while you're playing hockey. And, you know, that's kind of one of the roles of, of being a professional athlete is, is being away from your kids. And it's, you know, it's good in his case that he probably, you know, he does have a supportive wife and probably, you know, I got to imagine with all his money, some nannies and stuff to help take care of those uh, children. So, it's just really, it's, you know, it's good for Alex Ovechkin to get some of that time back at home to kind of reset and refocus because, you know, we need Alex playing uh, in, in the top, top form. Every year you have to be physically ready, mentally ready, Ovechkin said, adding, right now it's time to get rest, finally to see my family and go back home, take a rest and get ready for next year. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what it's all about. And you got to think that, you know, one of the lists of things that, uh, Alex Ovechkin might be worrying about is Nick Backstrom. Uh, like I talked about in yesterday's podcast, there is the possibility that, uh, you know, he's going to need rehabilitation. There's the possibility that he might need surgery, but there's also the possibility that he may retire. And how will Alex Ovechkin play without his right-hand man, number one center, um, 
Nick Backstrom. And I know that they haven't played on the same line for some time, but it always seems that throughout the season, they work their way together uh, and they end up, you know, with some mix ups in the, in the line pairings and that kind of thing that they end up, you know, if they're really needing scoring, they put, they put Ovechkin and Backstrom on the same line together. And, you know, one of the, the lines that really gelled for the Capitals last season was that Wilson, I, in my opinion, that's where you got to keep Wilson. Keep Wilson on the top line. I know they, they had Oshie on the top line, and that had mixed results, I've got to say. I think that in the playoffs it worked rather well, but I still, I still like Tom Wilson on that top line. He has that big physical presence, that intimidator to kind of let Alex Ovechkin and Nick Backstrom do their thing. I know that, you know, Tom Wilson is a legitimate goal scorer, but, uh, you know, it just seems to, to have that level of muscle on the top line uh, to kind of serve as a deterrent. And then, you know, if, if they're up playing and all of a sudden that he shoots it to Ovechkin, he doesn't necessarily have to do it. He could dish it to Tom Wilson and uh, he can score goals now as well. I know that oftentimes around the league, Tom Wilson is seen as a bit of a goon. But if that's the case, you definitely are not paying attention to hockey. You know? Just the big networks talking about their opinions are, uh, you know, th- th- that's a bit sad, to be honest with you, because you got to get information from other sources other than just the big media outlets, because oftentimes they try to spin stories. And, uh, you know, that's what I'm saying. Just let's hope that, that Tom Wilson, Nick Backstrom and Alex Ovechkin are all in top form, because in this period of transition, you need those big name players, those marquee names that have kind of established the Washington Capitals as a great hockey town. Uh, if you think about the Washington Capitals before uh, they had Alex Ovechkin, you know, they didn't have they they didn't have nearly the popularity. They kind of struggled in the in the weeds for years. Uh, the attendance wasn't that high, and then all of a sudden they drafted Alex Ovechkin, and along came this this big goal scorer, this you know flashy name, and it just goes to show you what a big name you know like Alex Ovechkin can do for your team, and that's kind of what I'm talking about tying it back with the Nationals. You know, do you really want to part with someone like Juan Soto? Juan Soto, who I would say is a franchise player. And, you know, I would say in large part, part of the reason why a lot of people go to see um, Washington Nationals games is to see Juan Soto. I mean, you are looking at a future Hall of Famer, you know, unless he suffers some major injury or something like that. You are looking at a big, uh, a big name and a future Hall of Famer. There's no doubt. So for the Washington Nationals to even kick the tires on that seems a bit mystifying. I know one of the things about it is they, you know, he is going to demand the King's ransom and he could get it on any team. And maybe the Washington Nationals don't want to pay him that much, but there are certain players that you got to just kind of hand the checkbook over to him and say, you know what, fill it out. You tell me what you deserve and I'll sign it. Uh, Because could you really imagine this Nationals team without Juan Soto? Could you imagine the Washington Capitals without Alex Ovechkin? That is a world that I don't want to live in. All right. And then just looking at the news with Peter Laviolette, I got to say that he played or excuse me, he coached great uh, for this Washington Capitals team. He I think he made some pretty sound decisions overall. Not everyone can be perfect all the time, just like him. But I think that he did a good job for this Capitals team. And when Brian McClellan was asked about the future of Peter Laviolette with the Capitals, he said that is going to be be between us and management. But that's the one thing I'm going to say. I'm going to say this about the Washington Capitals, and I'm going to say this about you know all the different teams in the NHL and all of professional sports really stop with the coaching carousel. I know that, you know, it's easy to blame the coach, but if you have poor performances, you know, the the coach can't strap the skates on. It all depends on what players are on the ice, how well they gel. So let's give Peter Laviolette uh, a break for God's sakes. You know, I I just think the fact that a resounding no, his job is safe here, you know, it's a bit sad to be honest with you because who are you going to bring in? You know, another, you know, are we going to bring in another guy like Todd Reardon? You know, hey, we're going to get rid of Barry Trotz and bring in Todd Reardon. Well, how well did that work? Oh, I got another idea. Let's bring in someone like Adam Oates. How well did that work? So just don't make change for change sake. Exercise sound judgment when you're doing these things. You take a look at the Islanders. I, I hate to say this. If there's any Islanders fans, you guys, you gave up Barry Trotz who has a a long track record of winning in favor for Lane Lambert. You know, nothing to say disparaging about Lane Lambert. You know, uh, from all appearances, he did a good job as an assistant. But it's totally different once they're wearing the big boy shoes and the big boy pants, and they're pushing all the buttons and making all the strings, pulling all the strings. And sometimes it translates, sometimes it doesn't. And it remains to be seen. But, you know, just getting rid of someone like Barry Trotz, you know, another guy in another team that's kind of, you know, giving him the cold shoulder, you know, it just, it's questionable. And, uh, you know, that's what I'm saying is I just hope 
that uh, the Washington Capitals and Peter Laviolette's job is safe. All right, this has been this edition of Locked On Capitals, and I'll make your sick second listen Locked On NHL from the first round matchups to each Stanley Cup kiss. Locked On NHL covers the playoffs like no other. Hear the latest news and opinions from local experts every Monday through Friday. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. So once again, thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals.